Hello and welcome to this little video where we will be learning about birds together. There are so very many birds in this world, but to keep things nice and simple, we are going to be focusing on but four birds today, starting with the bullfinch. The bullfinch is a chubby little bird, known for the red color of the male's chests. Females and younger specimens have to settle for a gray and brown plumage but the bright white wing bars are still striking as the birds take flight. They can be found all across Europe and temperate Asia. While mainly a resident, those who live further north tend to migrate south when winter comes. They prefer to build their nests in trees and large bushes and lay between four and seven eggs. Bullfinches mainly eat seeds and the buds of fruit trees. The latter can make them quite the obnoxious little buggers for gardeners but after all, we must all eat something. The call of the bullfinch is unobtrusive and almost shy, a series of quiet whistles, often described as mournful in tone. The next bird today is the Eurasian blue tit. This bird is easily recognizable by its stark blue and yellow plumage and small size, having a length of only 12 centimeters and with a wingspan of 18 centimeters, weighing no more than 10 grams. One fun fact about this little bird is that the yellowness of its abdomen depends on the number of yellowy green caterpillars it has eaten as these contain high levels of carotene pigments. Eurasian blue tits are non-migratory birds, widespread throughout subarctic Europe and the western pale arctic, preferring to reside in woodlands rich with oak. They usually nest in tree holes, although can easily adapt to nest boxes where necessary. Despite their deceptively small size, the blue tits have one of the largest clutch sizes of all birds. They lay between 8 and 12 eggs, but numbers can get as high as 16. To eat, the Eurasian blue tit prefers insects and spiders. Outside the breeding season, they also enjoy seeds and similar vegetarian foods. The birds are famed for their acrobatic skills, able to cling to the outermost branches and hang upside down when looking for food. This makes them quite a spectacle as they swing about, causing them to be popular as garden birds. Their call is akin to a snickering of sorts, letting out little collections of mischievous chirps. Next bird is the yellow hammer, a bird that is distinct for its song and for its eye-catching yellow color, from which it gets its name. Its head and chest are particularly colorful, the rest of its little body mixing in more streaks of brown. Again, the female is duller in color, but still gets to enjoy a faded yellow plumage. The yellow hammer is native to Eurasia, but has been introduced to New Zealand and Australia. Most of the European specimens remain in their home region all year round, while their eastern cousins are partially migratory and tend to spend winter further south. They are common in open areas with some shrubs or trees, and form small flocks in the winter. In breeding season, the female builds a hidden nest either on the ground or close to it. There, it lays three to five eggs. Both of the parents feed the chicks until they are old enough to care for themselves, and one couple generally birth and raise two or three broods every year. They are quite the proactive little birds. Much like they lay their eggs on the ground, they also search for food there, often in flocks. They mainly eat seeds, but changes in agricultural practices has caused a food shortage for our poor feathered friends. Nevertheless, they are still quite numerous and not at all endangered. The yellow hammer's call is quickly recognizable for its ascending rhythm, ending in one long note. Some have remarked that it sounds like they are saying a little bit of bread and no cheese whereas others remark it sounds like they are counting to seven. What do you think it sounds like? And finally, 
the marsh tit. The marsh tit is our second smallest bird today, standing just as tall as the blue tit at around 12 centimeters, but having a wingspan of 19 centimeters, very narrowly beating its relative in size. It also weighs 12 grams, two more than the average blue tit. This bird's most noticeable trait is at the top of its head, which is completely black and makes it look somewhat like it's wearing a little cap. Aside from this, it has a pale chest and cheeks, a brown back, and grayish-brown wings and tail. It bears a close resemblance to the willow tit, and the two can easily be mixed up. In fact, they were not even recognized as separate species until 1897. The easiest way to tell them apart is by their call, and the March tit also has a significantly smaller head. It can be found throughout temperate Europe and northern Asia, and, despite its name, it occurs in a range of habitats including dry woodland. The marsh tit prefers to eat caterpillars, spiders, and seeds. It nests in tree holes, choosing existing holes to enlarge, as opposed to making its own from scratch. It lays five to nine eggs. Its call comes in the form of repetitive, but nevertheless melodic chirps. That is all for today. I hope you learned something, or that this video was at least a pleasant experience. I will hopefully see you in the next video, where we will be talking about something else.